Hi guys, today I'm going to talk to you guys about something that I have been postponing and dreading for months now, and that is about the School of Sweet Georgia and our Patreon campaign. Hi there, thank you guys so much for being here today. I'm Felicia from Sweet Georgia Yarns and we are a hand-dyed knitting yarn company here in Vancouver in Canada. Now, as many of you guys know, if you've been following my Patreon campaign for the last year, it was last May, at this time last year, that I announced the idea of the School of Sweet Georgia. And so basically, if you've been following along for the past year, I've been developing video-based educational content for the fiber arts. So we just launched our dyeing class a couple of weeks ago. So this journey over the past 12 months has been exhilarating, it's been challenging, and it's pushed my abilities and my boundaries beyond what I expected. This School of Sweet Georgia idea really pushed me into the unknown and got me to do things that I never felt comfortable doing or expected to need to learn how to do or anything like that. And I am really thankful and thrilled with how everything has come together over the past year. Now, within the past 12 months, it was the encouragement and support of our Patreon community that really kickstarted this whole thing off and made it possible for me to make these courses. And together with the help of Leah Churchley, who has been um, assisting me with making videos and, and filming and all these kinds of things over the past year, it's only together with this this massive input of ideas and support and encouragement that this whole thing was able to have liftoff. So with the past 12 months, we've been able to create three courses for the School of Sweet Georgia. The first one is the Color Play, which is the five video workshop that we put together to help knitters understand a little bit about the basics of color theory and then also to learn how to put color combinations together. The second course we put together was called Dying Intentional Color, and that was really about bringing people from not knowing anything about hand dyeing and teaching people how to make solid shade uh, yarns from an immersion pot. So it was really about teaching the fundamentals of acid dyeing to somebody who's never ever touched dyes before. And this last course that we launched is called Dyeing Complex Color. And this is all about taking people that next step and showing them all different kinds of dye application techniques. And so Dyeing Complex Colors is really sort of like this epic five hour long course that was dedicated to showing people how to expand on their knowledge and uh, learn how to apply dyes and colors in totally different ways, like layered and glazed and hand painted and self striping and using sock blanks and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we have been putting together over the past 12 months. Building and working on all this content over the past year has been a very big challenge for me personally. Ever since my 20s, I've always been a passionate sort of student of photography. I learned still photography early on in my 20s and took classes and all these kinds of things because I was using photography as a skill to improve my design work. I was, I was working as a graphic designer at the time and I wanted to use photography to be able to see things in a different way, to be able to see things that maybe other people couldn't see about a scene or, a, or a whatever. So I've always, always, always had a very strong interest in photography and photography was sort of the cornerstone of my blog when I started in 2004. It was taking pictures of yarn, taking pictures of my knitting and things like that. Then several years ago, we started our podcast. And so working on the podcast required me to learn how to record audio, edit audio, clip it all together, learn how podcast publishing all works and all this kind of stuff. But then in the past year, I've had to sort of ramp up all of my knowledge and understanding and start to understand things like how to film things, video production, pre-production, planning, trying to figure out what's going to go into any particular shot, and then video editing and even export settings, all of these kinds of things. Color correction was a big one as well, learning how to color correct, color grade, um, use presets, all these kinds of things, and <laughs> learning the software, like learning how to use Adobe Premiere Pro. All of these things uh, have been on my plate, and it's been a really big learning curve for me, for sure. 
And finally, I really had to face my fears about stepping out from behind the camera to be now in front of the camera. And I was always given the advice that the only way to get better at something is to just practice it over and over and over again. And so that's where we find ourselves today. I committed last fall to making a weekly vlog for YouTube in order so that I could put myself in this very awkward position of talking to a camera all day long and to see if I could just get better at this so that I could become a better teacher as well. And you know, I've also watched myself just kind of stepped outside of myself and watched myself sort of run around in circles because of insecurity, not knowing is this going to work or is that going to work or should we use that software or are people going to like this? Are people going to want this? All of this stuff. And so over this past year, I think I've come to realize that there's actually no best way and that just done is better than perfect, but I'm trying to do the very best that I can. So what I discovered recently in this past course launch is that it took many, many months, like five or six months for me to be able to write and shoot and edit and clip together this course, this epic sort of dying course. And it was, I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. I kind of overscheduled myself and, you know, all the writing that needs to happen and all the, all the scurrying around that needs to happen to make this course happen. So I really overscheduled myself, you know, not recognizing that I really only have about 20, 21 hours a week where I can sit down and focus on doing this work, you know, writing the content, filming the content, editing the content, administering the members for the school, and also at the same time, maintaining all of the same duties that I have at Sweet Georgia in providing creative direction, in providing some guidance, some product generation, all of these kinds of things, and a lot of marketing and all of that kind of stuff. And so it's just been a little bit bonkers. And so of course it is my fault. I recognize that I thought it would somehow be possible to create all of this educational content, like this lifetime's worth of educational content by myself in a very, very short amount of time. When I came to realize over the past year that this is the work that I'm gonna be doing for the next five, 10 or 15 years is making this educational content. And so I was trying to cram it into a very, very short amount of time when really this should be just a continuous and ongoing thing, right? teaching these fiber arts skills, not just in dyeing, but I also want to be able to do things related to dyeing, natural dyeing, procyon, fiber reactive dyes, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And then also moving back into spinning and then also moving into weaving. There's just a lot of content that I am passionate about, that I want to do, that I want to teach, but that I can't do all at once. <sighs> <laughs> I've always sort of viewed myself as the tour guide. Like I'm the one who's always like, hey guys, look over here. Look at this. This is like amazing. Did you see this color over here? Did you see this pattern over here? Did you see the whatever? I feel like that's my job is to serve as the tour guide who gets excited to show you and teach you, you know, whatever it is that I've stumbled across that I think um, is amazing in the fiber arts world. So what's next for the school? What's next for the School of Sweet Georgia? Well, this is very, very simple. I'm just gonna keep making content. I'm going to keep making videos, but the change that I'm going to make moving forward in this year is that I'm gonna try to make smaller workshops and smaller courses and smaller things that I can release more frequently. That is the plan. I wanna make things that are more bite-sized and more digestible and Hopefully that will allow me to make content a little bit faster and then also release it to everybody a little bit faster as well. And I felt like, you know, making the commitment to make this video every week and have this come out every week shows me for myself that I'm able to get this content out. I am actually able to do it. Um, yeah, I just have to do it. <laughs> So I think that I can make these smaller workshops and smaller courses on a more ongoing basis and then make the larger, more epic classes, maybe make those, you know, once or twice a year. So starting this September, I might have a little bit more time on my hands too. Russell, our oldest, he's going to be turning five and so he's going to be starting kindergarten. He's starting French immersion in September. That might be a little bit of a crazy transition. And our youngest, Nina, she's going to be starting preschool in September. So that's going to be five days a week, nine o'clock to one o'clock in the morning, four hours a day, every day that I'll be hands free. 
I've already started to think about what I might be doing during those hours. So in any case, it means that perhaps there's going to be a little bit more time for some content creation during those morning hours. So that is kind of what I am leaning on or hoping for. So now what is happening with the Patreon side of things? Now I started Patreon last May, like I said, because I needed to have a way to know if anybody out there was interested in seeing me make this stuff to make this content to make this school and so the patreon was basically asking people to raise their hands and say that they think that this is a good and interesting and viable idea but since the very beginning i've always felt a little bit uneasy or unsettled with having our community on Patreon because, you know, between Patreon and working with the Teachable platform for delivering the courses, these things, this is like working with rented land. It's like working with rental property, really. And it's not like building your own house. This is really the reason why when I started Sweet Georgia, I started originally on Etsy. And then within three months, I left Etsy to start my own website. Even if it was like a clunky kind of, you know, hacked together, very simple three page, four page website, it was still really important to me that Sweet Georgia had its own home. And so I've felt like Patreon and Teachable are great because it got us going. It just was the kickstart. It was the bump to, you know, not have to worry about technology and just get this thing off the ground. But now that it's launched and it's off the ground and it's viable and I think that this is what people want, I really need to build my own house. So Patreon and our community there was really a way to get this project off of the ground. But now that it's launched a year after, you know, we started, this is the time that we're going to evolve the school and the community to something that is more permanent, something like our permanent home. And so I want it to be a place that can house these sort of mid-sized tutorials and workshops. Um, there are lighter tutorials that we've had in the past that right now are not published anywhere, you know, just pulling together all of the educational content that we've created and putting it all in one spot. And it's also hopefully a way that we can bring together sort of all the parts of our community that are all kind of floating in different places because we have a community of people who are chatting on Slack, on our Slack community. And then we also have a group of people who are on our private Facebook group for the School of Sweet Georgia. And, you know, just to have a place where everybody can B. <laughs> the concept behind this is kind of like a clubhouse idea, I guess. Um, I think about this because when I was in university, I was president of the UBC Dance Club for a year. I was actually on the exec for like four or five years. I don't know, something like that. I spent a lot of time at the UBC Dance Club. And so we had this club office in the student union building. And I actually spent more time in the clubhouse, in that club office, than I ever did in my classes for school. I felt like that's where I did a lot of my learning. That's where I did my socializing. That's where I got my opportunities. That's where just that's where I learned to grow up. And that's where I got my university education, I guess, was in that clubhouse. And so that's kind of like how I picture or envision this School of Sweet Georgia clubhouse to be. It's just the place where everybody comes together and is able to access resources and tools and more information beyond what's in sort of an enclosed class or course. And so there's one last piece to this puzzle. And it's that when I started this Taking Back Friday vlog, the whole point of it was to take time or make time to make things. And I haven't really been doing that. <laughs> Over the past couple of months, I've sort of worked it out with my husband that on Tuesday evenings and Thursday evenings that I get those evenings to myself to do whatever I want to do. But what do I end up doing with that time? I think you have a guess. So Tuesday nights, I take that evening to catch up on email. And then the Thursday night, I spend editing this vlog. And so those two nights where I could be knitting or spinning or weaving or whatever, I'm not actually doing any of those things. The time that I got back, I just gave right back to work. I mean, that's 
just kind of how I am, I guess. So one of the things that I want to do coming up in the next few months is that as we start building this sort of this site for the School of Sweet Georgia, I want to start hosting, um, I guess, kind of like a live stream crafternoon kind of thing. And so what I'm thinking is, you know, once a month on a Friday at lunch hour, 12, p- 12 p.m. PST, my time to basically, you know, turn on the live stream and then you guys can join me in the attic as I actually get stuff done. So my goal is to actually tie things onto the loom and to actually be spending some time warping things. And then if you guys want to keep me company while I do those things, it'll also help keep me accountable for what it is that I actually want to do, which is to spend the time making things and not just to give all my time back to work. (laughs) So yes, that would be the idea that we get to spend some time together chatting for maybe an hour on a Friday, once a month at lunchtime, and then we can actually take back that time on Fridays. (laughs) So there you have it. It's been an evolution this past year. And, you know, from taking those first few shaky steps from absolute zero to now being able to have these courses and this content that is available to you guys, I am so thankful and grateful for those first founding Patreons in our community. And so thank you guys so much for supporting this idea, for being interested in this idea, for wanting to see me make this content. Thank you guys so much. I have been challenged not only by having to create this educational content, but also been challenged to somehow find a way to provide value to you guys in the community who are supporting this. So what is the plan moving forward in the next couple of months? So this month, the month of May is going to be a little bit crazy because about half of May I have no childcare. And so I don't even know if I'm going to be able to make these Friday updates. But in any case, uh, I'm going to try and do what I can. So the plan is that over the next couple of months, I am going to be building this website for the School of Sweet Georgia. I've already started building it, but I'm going to open it up as a beta to the people who have been part of our Patreon community since the beginning. So anybody who's ever participated in our Patreon community, I will send you guys an email inviting you to come join this um this website and then you can see the inside of it and see whatever content is already being put there. We're going to add content this summer and um, it will drip out sort of like every every couple of weeks or every month there's going to be more stuff added and added and added to this website. And then the plan is September that we can launch this to the world at large. And so from that point on it will be probably something like a monthly you know, subscription to be able to access the workshops and things like that that are going to be in this site. Um, The courses are still going to be sort of standalone at this point. We'll have to figure out how we're going to incorporate them. Maybe we take the courses and put them into the school as well. Just figuring out all of those technical things right now. But that is the plan. So I would like to invite all of our Patreon supporters to join us at the very beginning to see how this is all going to be built because this is basically the evolution of the School of Sweet Georgia. And it's basically, it is what we're building. We're just going to be building our own house now. That's it. So I feel like this is the way forward. And I absolutely thank you so much for continuing to follow me on this adventure. It's it's very fun and it's very exciting and I'm so excited and thankful to be able to do this. So thank you guys so much for being here again to listen to all of this this week. And if you like this episode, please hit the like button. And if you would like to hear more updates from us every Friday, please hit subscribe and you'll be notified when new videos go up on YouTube. And I would love to hear in the comments from you guys about what content you'd like to see in this School of Sweet Georgia. What kind of mini workshop, what kind of mini course would you like me to do in the future? And then I will pick through all those ideas and we can talk about that in another episode. All right. Thank you guys so much. And I guess I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.